Good morning, Celebration of Life family and friends. Welcome to our live stream. It's so exciting to come into your home today and share with you the Word of God and also come into the Lord with, to worship and, and uh, exalt in His name. I know we're in a different season, but the, the Lord is on our side. Amen. Right. And I uh, just want to encourage you with just a scripture today, the Word of God in, in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 3. And the Lord, word of the Lord says, Therefore tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says, Return to me, Yes. declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you. So good. Throughout this season of what we're going through right now, that's, that's basically what it boils down to, guys. We need to return to the Lord. Amen. You guys that are, that are just newly saved, maybe, maybe you don't even know the Lord today and you're watching today. The Bible says return to Him. Yes. All of us need to return back to the Lord in right. some some form or fashion. Go back to our first love where we yeah. found Him. Let's just repent uh, on the behalf of our nation. Repent yes. of our own sins. Yes. This is a time of returning, returning back to the Lord. Amen. And the Lord, He said, if we would do that, He would heal our land. Right. He would heal our land right. and forgive us of our sin. So let this be a time this morning to come into the Lord and just returning to Him giving him all of us let him be lord of all of our life not just yeah. part of our life amen yeah. god bless you today and pastor cindy's going to share a word as well. well i woke up with this psalm psalm 112 and it says shout in celebration of praise to the lord today is palm sunday and we want to rejoice in that jesus came and he came on a donkey into town and they were shouting yes, hosanna yes. hosanna to the highest and he is the reason we are standing here today it's because of his love you, his Lord. mercy and his Thank grace you, but it, but psalm 112 says shout in celebration of praise to the lord everyone who loves the lord and delights in him will cherish his words and be blessed beyond expectation oh, so their descendants will be prosperous and influential Every generation of his godly lovers will experience his favor. Great blessing and wealth fills the house of the wise, for their integrity endures forever. And I love this part. Even if darkness overtakes them, sunrise brilliance will come bursting through because they are gracious to others so tender and true. Life is good for the one who is generous and charitable. And then I want to move on to the next one. They will not live in fear or dread oh, so of good. what may come for their hearts are firm, ever secure in their faith. Thank you, Lord. I want to encourage you today to be secure in yes. your faith in Jesus. Yes. Love on him and let him love on you. Continue to worship with us as we go into praise and worship right now. God bless you. God bless you. you. Here we go. Well, good morning, church. Hey, I want to worship you, Lord, because you're worthy of all the glory. You're the most high God. You are the most high God. You are the most high God. Oh, you are the most 
control this morning. We love you, Jesus. Come on, just continue to worship with us right now.
God bless you, Celebration of Life. Uh, we're going to take this time right now to receive our tithe and offering, and I want to thank you personally for me and Pastor Todd. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and your giving during this season. You know, God is desiring for each and every one of us to live with generous hearts and live with our hands open. So I want to encourage you to continue to do that. You can go to colbaytown.com forward slash giving and click the link there to give, or you can mail your tithe and offering to 5422 Hazel Street in Baytown, Texas. So while you're doing that right now, while you're giving, I want to take a moment and I just want to pray for you. So Father God, I declare a hundredfold return on every giver right now. I thank you, Lord, that they are receiving a hundredfold manifold blessing in this season. So Father, we thank you that there would be no lack in the, in the people of God as they sow their seed today. I thank you, Lord, that this seed is going into good ground and it's going to bless the kingdom of God through this ministry. I thank you, Father God, that there will be no lack in the people of God's life, but they will have pressed down, shaken together, and running over goodness and blessing and mercy in each and every one of their homes today. I declare the blessing and the favor of God over you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, man, it's been so much fun worshiping with you today uh, digitally. Once again, man, we can't wait to give you guys big hugs. Uh, it is so weird not uh, physically seeing you guys face to face, but so cool. Thank God for technology uh, that we can meet digitally right now. Um, and for those watching who don't attend Celebration of Life Church, hey, thanks for watching today. Um, we just encourage you guys Man, use the comment section like your amen corner. You know, uh, feel free to post. If there's any uh, part of the message today that resonates with you, go ahead and take notes in the comments because it helps other people process the message. Um, and uh, if, there, or if there's a scripture that's shared that really resonates with you, uh, type it in as well. Uh, engage in the comments um, because we want to hear from you and uh, use it once again as a way to amen. So, uh, I have a quick word for you. Uh, we find ourselves in um, extraordinary times. Uh, they are, uh, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes. I, I find myself almost speechless at moments uh, watching the news and just going, God, what is going on? Like, it's, it's, it's hard to believe um, to see it watching, watching this happen around the world a pandemic happened around the world. And uh, as the president said uh, this week, uh, as a nation, um, we're gonna face some serious times ahead. And um, that's why it's more important than ever for the church to rise up. Uh, that's why we're doing this live stream because we want the life and the glory of God to be flooding people's homes, to be flooding uh, the airwaves right now. Um, because you know, there's a lot of discouraging news out there, uh, but we need the good news of Jesus's life and His glory and His power uh, to be spread around. And so, uh, God is for us and He's with us. And I, I just wanted to share a, a quick scripture with you today, um, out of Matthew chapter 28. It's the famous uh, Great Commission uh, that Jesus gives His disciples. Uh, I'm reading out of the ESV today. If you have your Bibles, uh, read with me. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 16, it says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Um, uh, this, of course, is an amazing passage. Uh, uh, there's a reason that it's famous, and that is, that is because we see Jesus' parting words uh, to his disciples, the last uh, uh, physical words uh, that he gave to all of his disciples before he ascended to heaven. This is, of course, not a suggestion from Jesus. Uh, this is not uh, advice he's giving us. This is a very clear command from the King of Kings and from the Lord of Lords that we, his people, 
his disciples are to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. What does it mean to make disciples? Um, well, it's two things. It is to tell people about Jesus and to teach people about what Jesus said and how to, how to do what Jesus said. It is to first tell people about Jesus and his salvation, and secondly, to teach people how to obey the things he said to do. It's very simple. It's just those two things. It's a simple, but it's not easy. You know, uh, the grace of God is free, but it's also costly. You know, uh, um, a, a few uh, years ago when we had Hurricane Harvey, uh, a lot of donations were sent to our church. Our church became a distribution center. And uh, we had these big 18-wheelers showing up and uh, me and Alex and a few other, other guys and you know everyone just stepped up in the church like amazing. Uh, and, and we were unloading those trucks. Now, now, those trucks were a free gift and it was amazing. I mean, you're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars worth of products that we get to distribute to, to people who are in need, which is incredible. And we're, we're overwhelmed by that generosity. But how many know when the truck arrived, even though the gift was free, we had to get in there and we had to get sweaty and, and, and we had to carry stuff out and use some forklifts and, and, and move stuff around and, and get to work. And see that the grace of God is absolutely, it's a free gift for anybody who wants to receive it. But, but oftentimes when, when we receive the things of God, it feels costly to us at first. Uh, for example, God, you know, Jesus is saying, listen, I love you so much that I would rather you not uh, uh, smoke anymore because that's ruining your body and, and your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and it's destroying your body. And so, man, that's really costly at first, right? And so maybe the conviction of the Holy Spirit comes in and says, man, I, 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 it may not be that, it may be something else. The Holy Spirit comes in and convicts you of that you know is not right and, and, and that you know you, you want the grace of God to help you change in that area, but, but, but you, it feels costly at first. And, and by faith, you say yes, and he begins to transform you. And then on the other side of that thing, you realize that it actually wasn't a cost, it was a gift. The grace of God felt costly at first, but it was actually a gift because it set you free. Uh, and this is true for anything that you're walking with, whether it's anger, whether it's pride, whether it's lust, uh, whatever sin that we, we all have, our, our, our habits and our hangups, every single one of us uh, have fallen short of the glory of God. And we need a savior. We need the grace of God to forgive us and to set us free from sin. And, and so when Jesus comes and he requires something of you, he's done it with me. Uh, Whitney and I have been really the past six months of our lives has really been an intense season of the Lord sifting us and getting stuff out of our lives that didn't need to be there. And it hurts at first. And we're like, Jesus, I thought your grace was warm and fuzzy. Why you gotta be hurting me like this? And, and C.S. Lewis puts it this way. He said, the only time God will hurt you is when he's pulling a thorn out of your knee. Uh, how many of you know when, when you got a kid with a thorn in their knee, it, it hurts to pull that sucker out. But it, it, it's a pain that heals. It's a pain that's bringing healing. And so God wants to pull those thorns out of your heart. Pull that stuff that's killing you out. And it, it, it'll hurt for a second at first, but in the end, it's gonna be a gift. In the end, it's gonna be healing very soon after. So Jesus is saying, he said, listen, I, I'm calling you. I'm putting a demand on your life. Because I love you, I'm calling you higher. And I really feel in this season that God is, is calling the church Listen, people can debate on, on why the, the, the virus is here. Listen, we're not even going to get into that. That, that. I don't even think that's actually an important question to be debating. The question is not where the virus came from. The question is, what is God expecting from us right now? What is God expecting from you right now? And, 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 and you set your eyes on Jesus and say, God, clean out my heart. Get me right with you because I know you're coming back soon. He is coming back soon. Jesus gave us a promise. He gave a promise to the disciples here. He said, I am with you to the very end of the age. Man, it feels like the end of the age right now. Uh, we have a pandemic sweeping the globe. We have, uh, uh, the, the, I read a story recently of there's locust swarms in Africa right now. There's, uh, we had uh, wildfires in Australia at the beginning of this year. Uh, there's a lot of suffering and hurting going on. But Jesus made us a promise. Even in the end of the ages, 
He will be with us. He's with you today. And I want to close with two things. If he is with you, uh, that should encourage you and convict you. And I'll, I'll start with the second one first, uh, the, the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he's with us. Uh, but how many you know, uh, um, I, th- there were times where I just couldn't get away with anything bad. I, I would try to go do bad things with my friends, and I was a little church kid. And uh, this is the part where you start laughing in the comments, okay? So just laugh, 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 ha, 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 cry emojis in the comments. Um, I was a typical church kid, and I tried to be cool. And any time I ever tried to be, do something cool and like break the rules, my Holy Ghost mom, my mother, would be praying in tongues at the house and get a word of knowledge and call me and say, Jack, something's wrong. What are you doing? Something's going on. And I were like, you know, like, yes, mom, you know, uh, someone just tried to give me a cigarette. And, you know, and like, I'm just, (laughs) I I couldn't get away with anything, man. And, And like the conviction of the Holy Spirit would come on me and God used my mom to convict me. Well, you know, I, I, I felt like, you know, I'm like, mom, did you come with us to Galveston? Like, I, I thought I left you. You know what I'm saying? But uh, uh, Jesus being with us, hey, that brings conviction. Uh, how would you act? How would you live if Jesus saw everything you did? What would you watch in this season when you're at home and you pull up Netflix and, and, and you, you, you want to watch that documentary that everyone's watching? But Jesus said, I'm with you to the very end of the age. I'm with you on the couch to the very end of the age. I'm with you when you're watching Netflix. I'm with you uh, when you're going to the grocery store. I'm with you. And, and so we need to do, put all of our actions, all of our thoughts, all of the, the, infor- the, the things we consume, media, we need to put it through the filter that Jesus is with us. Jesus is with me right now. Uh, uh, whatever I'm watching, I'm subjecting Jesus to it. Uh, whatever I'm saying, Jesus is hearing it. And so let our actions, let what we watch, let what we say, honor Jesus because he's with us. So I, I pray for that conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's the love of God, once again, that pulls those thorns out of our hearts. So he, he's with us, that convicts us. But finally, of course, it comforts us. I, I Man, I, I want you to imagine right now, if, if you were able to walk around town, with Jesus by your side right now. Say, say you, you're going to uh, the grocery store and, and maybe you're a little freaked out by the virus and you're going to the grocery store. Hey, how awesome would it be if Jesus was physically with you? I mean, Jesus is walking around and he's got sandals on and he's got a tunic. I mean, it is physically Jesus. He's right there. You're pushing your buggy, okay? And Jesus is with you. I mean, you wouldn't fear anything, man. You'd be like, hey, listen, Jesus is with me. Uh, and also, if you saw someone in a wheelchair, man, your faith would be so high, you'd be praying for people, believing for healings. Well, see, Jesus said something interesting to the disciples in another passage. He said, he said actually, it's to your advantage that I go because I'm sending the comforter. You know, uh, uh, just like Jesus walking with us in a grocery store, we'd think that would be an advantage. Jesus said, actually, no, 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 you know what? It's, it's an advantage that I go because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And I'm not, I'm not just going to be beside you now. I'm not just going to be walking beside you. I, I'm going to be living in you. I'm going to be abiding in you. Now, if, if you believe in Jesus, uh, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and God living inside of you and with you everywhere you go. So Jesus is not only beside us, he's with us. Uh, it's, the Holy Spirit is Jesus everywhere. And he's with us to the end of the age. That should give us faith. It should give us boldness. It should also give us wisdom because the Holy Spirit is with us to give us wisdom in this time and what to do, what not to do, how to honor our govern, governing officials, how to, how to navigate this crisis. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom, okay? As he's given us as pastors wisdom through this time. We've relied on the Holy Spirit and we're continuing to. We love you. Know that Jesus is with you. He's for you and not against you. And, and I'll leave you with those two things. Put your life through the filter of Jesus right now. Is there anything in your life that you need to repent of? Is there anything in your life that that is dishonoring God? I'm telling you, this is the time to get it right with God. Get your heart right with God. It's as easy. The Bible says this, confess your sins and he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And then after you confess it, you take those steps, those sometimes painful and costly steps of being obedient to Jesus, and he will honor you. He will heal you. He will bless you, okay? So, th- so let the conviction of God 
uh, um, challenge you today. And finally, let Jesus' presence comfort you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for our nation together right now. Uh, um, and uh, I want you to engage right now in the comments. I, I want you to, to uh, uh, begin to type out a prayer for our nation in the comments right now. Come on, let's pray for our country right now. Lord, we pray for America. We pray for the nations of the world, for Italy, God, for, for all of Europe and Asia and Africa and South, and South America and Latin America, God. Lord, right now, we pray that you would stem the tide of this virus. God, I, I pray, Lord, that the curve wouldn't just flatten. I, I pray that the curve would, would, Lord, be non-existent, be demolished. We ask for a miracle right now in this time, God. We call out to you. We cry out to you. We, we do remember 2 Chronicles seven fourteen that says, If my people who are called on by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. God, we repent. Can, can you do that right now with me? Can we just repent for the sins of our nation? We do repent. God, for, 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 for turning our back on you. Uh, as a church, uh, uh, not, a, not even just the world, God, the church, Lord, we repent for being uh, lukewarm. We repent, God, uh, for not giving you our lives fully. We repent, Jesus, for, for sin. We repent, God, for turning our backs on you right now. And we ask that you would intervene in our nation, God. We stand in the gap for our nation right now and ask for a divine intervention in the name of Jesus. Let your healing flood like rivers of life through America right now in the name of Jesus. We ask for it. God, I bless your people. I pray that you draw us close to you in this time. Lord, we thank you that you know our name. We thank you that you are with us to the very end of this age. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, continue to worship with us uh, before, before we close out. Thank you so much for joining us today. He knows my name. He knows my name. Know how he walks with me. Know how he talks with me. Know how he tells me. That I am his own. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know.
of me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand, and I'm walking in your victory, cause your power is within me, no giant can defeat me, cause you hold my hand. prophesy healing over your life right now over your family wherever you are I just want you to raise your hands to Jesus right now come on the Holy Spirit is in that in your house right now with you he's fighting for you no matter what you're going through come on he's with you he's for you he's not against you I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you says the Lord thoughts to give you a future and a hope oh he, he is he's for you and not against you right now come on just receive that for your family in the name of Jesus come on let's just sing this with us no fire oh no fire can burn me, no battle can turn me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand, and I'm walking in your victory, cause your power is within me, no giant can defeat me, cause you hold my You know my name. 